So uh, today uh, I'd like to talk about how to review our, I mean, the inner source configuration for GitHub. I'm a, uh, I'm Yuki Hattori, a customer success architect from GitHub, uh, as well as a board member of the inner source commons. Yep. So uh, recently we authored um, uh, this chapter, managing inner source project. I mean, GitHub inner source strategies and GitHub inner source configuration. So I actually co-authored with Justin uh, from Microsoft. Uh, he's uh, serving Microsoft as an OSP or person. And then he actually infused so many Microsoft context in this uh, chapter. So I think this is one of the best around the world about GitHub configuration up there. So if you want to know more on this uh, chapter on and book, uh, please go to the uh, managing in a source project if, and then you can find uh, the valuable information. Yep. And actually I I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, about the description or an introduction of the book. So I'm going to show you a very kind of text heavy slides. So you don't need to read them all today. If you are interested in, please go to the book actually directly. So, and yeah, actually, it's very hard to uh, keep, keep both condition security and open transparent. So actually, this uh, book, I mean, this chapter is for uh, those who are interested in uh, configure uh, GitHub uh, for inner source. Um, so yeah, as I said, uh, balancing security and an inner source is very uh, difficult. And then there are a bunch of reasons you cannot do inner source in your company because of the, for instance, transfer pricing or security uh, related matters, uh, et cetera. So it's kind of important to acknowledge that certain constraints and con uh, consideration may prevent making everything openly and accessible within the company. So. And also, it, uh, it is necessary to uh, carefully consider different levels of code sharing and establish uh, appropriate source code management practices. So sometimes uh, people, uh, when people try to do inner source or adopt inner source, uh, people may think that they need to open everything, but it's not actually. So you need to understand the certain levels of the inner source uh, sharing and also you need to know about the suitable configuration for um, each levels. Yep, by defining these various levels for of sharing, organization can customize their SEM setup to accommodate the specific needs. So, for instance, if you have certain project, for instance, monolithic project, monolithic repository with uh, uh, high confidential uh, information or uh, implementation, probably you, you want to um, hide those information from the even the same company members. But if you want to uh, split uh, uh, this project into several parts, and then probably you can take uh, some parts from the project and then make it open source, uh, inner source, it's uh, become much easier for you to share uh, those items and a source code uh, in your organization. So you need to set up the uh, different levels for uh, each repository. And <clears throat> the opportunity actually uh, to balance both needs comes from observation that there is not much overlap between the repositories that each perspective cares about the most. So yeah, so people don't want to open the very, um, uh, secret repository with uh, trade secret, uh, high confidential trade secret. But on the other hand, for instance, if you want to share uh, some code like a CICD templates or shared library, yeah, of course, it's very uh, easy to share inside the company. And then usually those source code or those uh, projects is not uh, not much, uh, doesn't have any overlap part. So. I think um, you need you, you can start from the small project to enhance inner source capability inside your uh, company and then gradually grow 
your uh, inner source capability as an uh, organization or, or as a company. Yep. And also, uh, when it comes to dependency, it's also uh, uh, there are some diverse um, dependency levels. So this is an example. For instance, lower dependency, you may have, uh, as I said, library or kind of uh, SDK without no uh, without implementation, or if you want to share some code uh, with high dependency, for instance, the API with SLA. And in that case, for instance, the team depends on other teams and also not only source code, but also you need to uh, provide the service with SLA. And um, it's uh, going to be very difficult to uh, provide um, the inner source, uh, inner source way of sharing. So actually, um, as you your inner source culture or inner source ecosystem inside your company grow, it's very uh, possible to share those code with SLA, I think. But uh, if you are newbie or if you are kind of novice of the inner source, probably it's better to start with lower dependency part and also uh, clearly define uh, each de uh, dependency level for the project and then probably you can start prioritizing your project to start in a source. Yep. So those kind of uh, project um, <clears throat> level uh, differentiation also prioritization setting is uh, very important for uh, even for GitHub configuration. Yep. And actually the participation hurdle can also vary depending on the setting on the IDP side. So this is something uh, uh, sometimes uh, not told, um, but actually IDP configuration, especially for GitHub Enterprise Cloud user is very important. So. GitHub essentially has a very basic uh, user management uh, control, um, I mean, I, I, identity management system. So it's very simple, but if you want to control a uh, father, so it, it's sometimes difficult. Uh, you, you may think it's difficult to manage it. So if you use, for instance, Microsoft Entra, I used to known as uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, or you are using Okta, uh, your capability of inner source or your uh, levels of configuration setting uh, of inner source uh, user management is um, very easy. And also um, you can specify, for instance, from everyone behind, uh, you, you, you can share your source code for with everyone behind the company firewall or you can just uh, specify the people uh, like a security group with that requires emailing someone to manually add you. So if you only uh, use GitHub uh, with GitHub uh, identification management, probably you can set up those two or maybe you can manage uh, your um, uh, level of sharing with team, team functionality. But if you use, for instance, Azure Active Dev, sorry, uh, at Microsoft Intra, uh, you can set up the security group and um, you can specify how to get in the space, uh, security group uh, as well as how to control and how to uh, make the people left uh, leave uh, from the security group. So um, my uh, recommendation here for, especially for enterprise is to set up uh, IDP configuration and also SAML or scheme uh, integration well, for GitHub. So um, you can also uh, set this info uh, configuration with different level from enterprise level um, SAML uh, integration, or you can also choose organization level uh, SAML int integration. And also uh, there is a certain uh, setting for uh, GitHub as a kind of independent uh, account management system called EMU, uh, Enterprise uh, uh, Managed Account. So um, yeah, so IDP integration is very essential for defining 
uh, the different level for each organization, each uh, company. So sometimes one single, uh, one parent uh, legal entity has bunch of affiliate under the under that. So um, if you want to control everything in enterprise level, I mean, GitHub enterprise cloud enterprise level. So uh, probably organization owner or admins will lose some control on their uh, repository or organization and then it makes uh, it very hard to do in a source sometimes. Yeah, and then usually sometimes people consider only option one as an inner source. So yeah, actually uh, if we can achieve this condition is better. So everything is transparent and everything is open. And then every employee can um, see the repository, every repository, it's fine and it's ideal. But yeah, usually a company has certain silos and then even we need to, we are told that we need to block, break those silos and it's sometimes possible. So you can also define the certain uh, levels of um, kind of uh, security level. You can define the kind of security level as well. Yep. And also, um, if you feel uh, GitHub configuration or GitHub functionality or GitHub levels of um, kind of uh, sharing uh, control is not enough, uh, you can still use uh, other uh, solutions. For instance, Backstage is a recent very uh, popular option for inner source uh, portal. So I think uh, on YouTube, there are so many uh, backstage related inner source uh, talk or, and session. Um, uh, if you are interested in um, more uh, interested in some inner source catalog solution, um, yeah, please go to those video. And then traditionally, actually, uh, we used to, uh, we are, uh, we can host our inner source catalog uh, on uh, SAP's inner source portal as well. So that's my recommendation as well. Yeah. And also uh, you can host your uh, inner source uh, environment in certain organization, not every organization, but you can specify one organization as an inner source environment and then you can uh, start collaborating here. So this is also one practices uh, from Microsoft. So I do recommend uh, these things. For instance, in Microsoft, actually I used to Microsoft, uh, worked for Microsoft and also uh, there are so many organization, for instance, Azure organization, in Azure organization, there are so many people working on Azure, but sometimes office people are not in this organization, but on the other hand, in an office uh, related organization, there is uh, very few uh, Azure related uh, people, for instance. So you can specify a uh, dedicated organization for uh, the certain purpose um, of the inner you know, source. Yep. And also you can use internal uh, type repository. In, in GitHub, there is a specific type of repository which is called internal, internal visibility. So under enterprise, I mean, GitHub Enterprise Cloud Enterprise, uh, if you are, uh, part of the uh, enterprise uh, member, you can see the this internal type rep, uh, repository. So um, if uh, your project is uh, open for everyone inside the company, uh, you can pick this type uh, repository type for your project, but yeah, it's not the always uh, usual case sometimes. So. Uh, still, you can choose uh, the solution, how to host your inner source project. So yeah, recently I uh, I see so many uh, example that people are using uh, Backstage. So I'm very interested in uh, Backstage solution uh, right now as well. So yeah, uh, and also my uh, customer also uh, adopted uh, Backstage as well. So recently I see some instances. So yeah. Let's, uh, if you're interested in, please take a look at the backstage as well. And also, um, 
GitHub Teams, I mean, GitHub team uh, functionality is also uh, usable for uh, GitHub configuration. So <clears throat> team is uh, defined under organization level. So if you are uh, either be a small or large group of individual independent of organizational membership. So actually um, if you define team uh, in repository, uh, you set uh, a repository visibility uh, open or not to the team. So, I mean, if you want to open uh, your project to certain teams, uh, you can specify team uh, to be shared. And also um, there are uh, certain levels of sharing, uh, company-wide sharing, organization member sharing, team member sharing, and a repository member sharing. So this is kind of, uh, 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 you can, uh, define your uh, favorite uh, configuration, our uh, scope of sharing uh, in GitHub. So um, yeah, as I told that, sometimes people uh, uh, become kind of fundamentalist who recognize only uh, option one, everyone behind the company uh, firewall sharing uh, as an inner source, but of course, on the way to achieve pure inner source, you can uh, choose team sharing before uh, enterprise level or internal uh, visibility, uh, internal sharing. So <clears throat> this is actually our uh, GitHub practices of, as well. So, and sometimes uh, we create private repository, but with, uh, GitHub FTE, um, I mean, GitHub full-time employee level sharing at, uh, by setting up the uh, team configuration. So uh, in repository, we invite GitHub FTE uh, team uh, to the project. And then also uh, even the pro project or even the repository itself is um, private. Uh, the condition where uh, the repository shared is uh, public as well. So, <clears throat> and also um, variation in how repository and uh, read access is distributed uh, also has two conditions spe uh, specifically. So um, the actually only way to enable a GitHub organization to have both repository shared across the enterprise and repository that are tightly controlled uh, such that only a small subset of organization members can see is to first enable read permission to be decided at the uh, repository level and not automatically give read permission to every repository in the organization to every member of the organization. Yeah. so. In GitHub, uh, there is a way to define the uh, how repository read access is distributed. So uh, in uh, GitHub, uh, you can specify, uh, you can set uh, the status like a uh, repository itself is public, but only few members have edit um, uh, or write uh, permissions. So this is commonly used uh, practices as well. So if you um, probably care much on the export control or other law or legal related matter is sometimes not the case, but if you are open uh, and also you, the project is shareable, but you want to control the uh, read and write access distribution, um, this is also the option you can take when it comes to sharing your code base. Yep. And in GitHub, um, there is uh, uh, three levels of uh, setting. Uh, first tier is enterprise setting, and the second tier is organization setting, and third tier is uh, repository setting. Yep. Actually, it's uh, important uh, when it comes to enterprise level, it's important to strike a balance between transparency and uh, collaboration and uh, res uh, respecting con uh, constraints and limitation. 
So uh, in the beginning of the presentation, I told that uh, some company uh, has one enterprise contract with a GitHub. I mean, it means one enterprise management console in for entire company, but they have so many um, subsidiaries or so many uh, other different legal entity as a group. So sometimes people in parent company want to control everything and then set up uh, GitHub's very strict uh, configuration. But I uh, strongly recommend that uh, to set the no policy at the enterprise level and leave it to the organization owner to configure their uh, the setting. So yeah, it depends on the case and it depends on the culture or depends on the, of course, industry. It also depends on the uh, what you are treating as a business. So, uh, but actually, if your uh, organization member are uh, uh, getting mature to configure GitHub, um, it's uh, better to uh, leave it as no policy or uh, no policy, yes. So um, in your inner source adoption journey, probably uh, you can, uh, early on, you can control everything uh, from the center, but uh, as your uh, journey uh, or as your um, uh, organization uh, administrator uh, maturity is growth, I recommend that you can in, uh, left uh, you 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 can leave uh, those settings to uh organization owners so you you have to include those kind of um organization owners education in your um inner source adoption journey so this is must have um option for uh inner source journey i think yep and <clears throat> yeah uh for repository creation, you have, of course, a certain option. And also here as well in enterprise level. Um, yeah, it of, of course depends on the company's culture constraint and limitation or purpose. But yeah, no policy is sometimes the uh, good option for you. And but at, at the same time, you need to um, make sure that organization level uh, configuration is set properly. So <clears throat> as an enterprise admin, um, I recommend to join a certain organization to um, not control, but to observe the setting as well as an um, enterprise owner, as well as organization owners. And repository forking, Yep, this is efficient for small one-off inner source contributions. However, for larger or team-based projects, many repository may uh, prefer branch-based development. So if you want to contribute uh, to inner source project as well as open source project, you have two options. You, are join, uh, you, you join the project as a member uh, with right permission to contribute to the other um, project. Otherwise, you fork uh, the repository and uh, you edit your uh, contribution in your uh, in in your end, and also finally contribute to the upstream um, uh, repository. So, for uh, when it comes to psychological uh, safety, I prefer actually uh, forking. So, uh, no one wants to uh, be um, uh, treat as kind of foolish or newbie when it comes to uh, new contribution. But actually, if your um, contribution or if expected contribution is very small, probably uh, you can allow a forking. And also, uh, you should accept uh, uh, the contribution from forked repository. But if you are um, running a wider scale in your source or if you uh, want to achieve team to team collaboration, I recommend that you will um, invite uh, your team member as well the, as other uh, guest member in the team and then start contributing uh, in the branch base.
basis. Yep. And for organization setting, yeah, there are member privilege setting, and then there are four patterns, wide sharing patterns, moderate sharing patterns. Yeah, this is uh, actually um, entirely open, but only read permission and opt in moderate sh sharing and narrow sharing. So there are a um, bunch of um, uh, patterns uh, and configuration, but um, there I, I would like to introduce two options, enable wide and moderate sharing from a single organization and option two, enable wide opt in moderate and narrow sharing from a single organization. So I don't go deeper here uh, because of the time constraint here. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, I recommend to read uh, these uh, wonderful documentation, uh, so many Microsoft context and experience is infused and also um, <clears throat> uh, logically defined uh, the certain levels of uh, configuration. So um, yeah, so in conclusion, um, it's advisable to anticipate the need for various levels of sharing. So Inasos is not only the status, uh, you share code entirely uh, inside the company, but you can set the certain levels for each project, for each uh, organization. And also granting repository owners the authority to manage visibility and permission is more effective than having organization or enterprise owners set them. So yeah, uh, also repository owner should be educated in that case. So if your, uh, your team member or if your employees is getting better um, to deal with GitHub, um, your inner source journey as a whole company also mature. So um, as well as uh, organization admin uh, education, I do recommend to um, adopt some kind of program to educate uh, GitHub configuration as well. So sometimes people are only interested in GitHub actions or CICD devils part when it comes to GitHub, but for inner source, this kind of um, configuration part is also essential. So at least um, people should know um, how to set up the repository properly. And finally, um, yeah, even minor procedural uh, abstract uh, can pr uh, prematurely terminate this initiative. So establish process that enable repository discovery and evaluation without requiring, uh, requiring permission requests whenever feasible. So it means if you want if you can give the read permission to users or if you allow forking, it's better. But uh, when it comes to, um, yeah, it, yeah, it depends on the company and I, it depends on the uh, source code, if it's include the trade secrets or not. So, but uh, please um, keep in mind that it's better to, um, a read or uh, experiment, experiment uh, the code base before um, <clears throat> the contribution, of course. Yep. Yep, this is it. Thank you very much. So uh, back to Mishari.